You're in a shark cage underwater, running out of oxygen, what do you do? Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is an adventure drama horror thriller from 2022 titled 47 Meters Down. Lisa and Kate, two sisters, are on vacation in Mexico. During a lunch conversation, Kate makes a toast to her sister for allowing her to accompany her instead of her boyfriend, Stuart. Later that evening, Kate finds a tearful Lisa on their suite's balcony and comforts her. Lisa reveals that Stuart couldn't come because the two had just broken up, her ex's reasoning being that she's become too boring, and this trip is her attempt to reclaim the fun she used to have in the hopes that her boyfriend will get back together with her. Kate invites her to a night out after hearing this. They go out to a club with the locals and meet two men named Luis and Benjamin. The two men tell the girls about shark cage diving and persuade them to try it, implying that they might be able to get a deal because they know the owner. Kate is ecstatic and eager to try it, but Lisa is hesitant because she has no diving experience, whereas her sister does. Lisa eventually agrees after Kate tells her how great and not boring the pictures will be during the experience, ultimately coerced by the added peer pressure. Luis and Benjamin escort the girls back to their rooms, bidding farewell to one another. Kate and Luis kiss, Benjamin tries kissing Lisa, who backs away, feeling that she isn't ready yet. As the four part ways, Lisa, in a spur of the moment decision, runs up to Benjamin and kisses him, embracing her fun side for the night. The following day, the four meet up with Taylor, the aforementioned owner and captain of a fishing boat that houses an old shark cage. He quickly surveys Kate and Lisa to make sure they're fit to scuba dive and soon after, they set sail. Out in the sea, Javier, Taylor's first mate, dumps a whole bucket of bloody fish remains as bait. Meanwhile, Taylor sets up the cage. They notice a shark's fin poking out of the water nearby. Kate is overjoyed to see this, but Lisa, who is wary of the situation, waits anxiously in the cabin. Kate persuades her to go see it, dragging her back outside where Benjamin and Luis are gradually lowered into the ocean in the cage. The same shark approaches the boat and upon closer inspection by Taylor, is identified as a 20-foot great white. He points it out to the girls, who are both taken with the creature. Taylor then instructs the girls to get changed. Kate and Lisa go back inside the cabin and emerge in their swimsuits and Taylor assists them in putting on the scuba gear. He brings their attention to the oxygen meter, stating that they both should have 200 bars and that if it gets to 100, they should notify him and if it drops below 50, he'll pull them both out. Benjamin and Luis emerge from the water as Kate and Lisa take their turn. The two enter the cage and descend. After a few seconds, the ocean begins to grow on Lisa, who is laughing hysterically at what she is seeing. Kate takes a picture of Lisa, who is striking a pose. She then requests that Lisa photograph her, and as the waterproof camera is passed, Lisa accidentally drops it. She tries to grab it, but it falls through the cage. They watch as it sinks and a shark appears from the depths, devouring the camera in a ferocious snap. The two are taken aback by the sudden appearance as it swims away. It comes back and circles the cage. Kate and Lisa look on in bewilderment as another one appears, it too circling them. As they enjoy the experience, the chain anchoring the cage suddenly budges. Taylor checks in on them through an earpiece, asking if they're okay. Lisa tells him that the cage dropped slightly, a clear concern in her voice. Taylor reassures her by saying it's just a winch mechanism that caused the sudden drop but Lisa still feels unsafe, insisting that they be pulled up now. As they are being pulled up, something in the pulley system snaps, causing it to spin out the entire length of supporting rope. The girls scream as their cage is sent plummeting to the depths of the ocean, snapping to a halt midway from the ocean floor, the impact knocking both Kate and Lisa out. Then, after a few seconds, the cage continues to drop, a part of the pulley shortly following, having been snapped off. The cage eventually hits the ocean floor, along with a snapped piece which lands right above the cage hatch, locking the girls inside. What seemed to initially be an irrational fear has now come to fruition. Here they are, 47 meters down. Later, as Lisa is bleeding from her mouth, Kate desperately tries to wake her up. Lisa awakens and is immediately terrified after seeing the blood and realizing where she is. As Kate tries to calm her down, she begins to hyperventilate. She's eventually able to recollect herself, and Kate warns her about her excessive use of oxygen. They assess their surroundings while trying to communicate with the men on the surface. The transmission between them is rough, near non-existent. Because of this, Kate decides to swim out of the cage and try to get in range with them. After discovering that the hatch won't budge, Kate decides to go through the gap after first removing all equipment to fit through. She re-equips the gear and makes an effort to move the snapped-off piece away from the hatch. She eventually does and the two briefly celebrate. 
Kate begins to swim up, in search of signal to connect her through. She successfully makes contact with Taylor who instructs her to stay in the cage and wait for Javier, who's coming down with a spare winch to pull them back up to the surface. She swims back down and reunites with Lisa in the cage, who waits anxiously inside. Kate returns with some good news, leaving Lisa relieved. The two squat down to recoup their scattered emotions and Kate apologizes for getting them into this. They start conversing with one another, clearing up their self-perceived differences. Then, they hear a mysterious sound coming from the surface. Lisa suspects that Taylor and his crew have left them, so Kate swims back up to confirm. As she tries to get confirmation from Taylor, who she couldn't reach, a shark swims up from under her, jaws wide open ready to cause carnage. Kate frantically swims back down to the cage as the fearsome creature pursues her. After re-entering the cage, the shark nearly rips the cage wide open as it tries to get her. After several failed attempts, the shark swims away. Kate and Lisa briefly argue about Taylor and his crew's trustworthiness as they are taking an awfully long time to come and help them. They try and come up with several ways to get out of there but none seem conducive. They check their oxygen meter, Lisa with 80 bars left, Kate with 30. Kate estimates that Lisa will last 20 minutes from this depth with her oxygen capacity, hers is obviously much lower. In the distance, they spot a flashlight and assume it's Javier. They try calling out for him but he doesn't seem to be moving or responding back. Kate's oxygen meter beeps and shows that she's only got 17 bars left, they decide that there's no other way but to get that winch cable. But because her oxygen capacity is swiftly depleting, Lisa tells her that she'll go out instead, asking for advice on how to stay safe. After being given important instructions, Lisa leaves the cage and sets off, keeping close to the ocean floor. As she's swimming, a panicked Kate tells her that a shark is coming towards her. Lisa successfully dodges and hides away under a formation of stones. She waits a few seconds, to make sure the shark is gone. Out of nowhere, the shark reappears through an opening, jaw snapping open and shut as it tries to get her. Lisa manages to escape and the shark leaves. She continues swimming, slowly getting closer to the flashlight when she encounters a large drop leading deep to the bottom of the ocean. She musters up the courage to swim for the flashlight, her transmission with Kate slowly dissipating. She sees the flashlight and grabs it but realizes she's forgotten where she came from. She calls out for Kate who doesn't answer, and out from the dark, the shark appears again. It tries to swallow her but she dodges. Suddenly, Javier pops out of nowhere and tells Lisa to get back in the cage, but he's unfortunately attacked by the shark. Lisa hides and her transmission with Kate starts getting better. They try to communicate when Javier's mangled corpse appears, causing Lisa to scream out in fear. She gathers her composure and checks Javier's oxygen meter to see that he's ran out. She looks for the cable and grabs it along with a spear gun. Lisa reunites with Kate and tells her of Javier's fate. Lisa connects the cable to the cage and swims up, managing to get through to Taylor. She tells him that she's connected the cable and that Javier was killed. Taylor instructs her to get back in the cage so he can bring them both up. The cage is slowly being pulled up and they manage to get up to 29 meters from the ocean floor before the cable snaps again, sending them back down. The cage lands on Lisa's leg, pinning her. Kate reassures her and then swims up to communicate with Taylor, who tells her that he's sending down extra oxygen tanks, explaining that he didn't do this before because going from one oxygen tank to the other increases chances of nitrogen narcosis. He also tells her that he's notified the Coast Guard and that they're coming to rescue them in less than an hour. Kate sees the oxygen tanks coming down and heads out to get them, successfully changing her oxygen just in the nick of time. Attached to the tank is a bag with a couple of emergency flares, she grabs those and the tank when she spots a shark headed for her. She dodges and hides under a formation of rocks, waiting for it to leave. Assuming it's now safe to do so, she decides to make a break for the cage with the tank but as soon as she does, the shark appears and attacks her. She drops the oxygen tank by the cage. Lisa grieves for her sister but she perseveres, trying to break free from the cage that's pinning her to the ground. Her oxygen meter beeps, indicating it's about to run out. She sees the oxygen tank nearby and decides to utilize the spear gun. She reaches out for it but accidentally sets it off, causing the spear to cut her hand open, drawing blood. She screams in pain but recollects herself, using the spear to pull the tank closer to her. She eventually does get the tank and is successfully able to change her oxygen. Out of nowhere, she hears Kate through her earpiece. Lisa briefly celebrates, having thought she died, but Kate tells her that she's severely hurt and that sharks are encircling her. Lisa asks her how much oxygen she has left, Kate replies that she's only got 30 bars. She tells Lisa that she's scared and Lisa comforts her, assuring that she's coming for her. 
She uses the scuba gear to lift the cage just enough so she can break free and sets out for Kate. She finds her terribly wounded on the ground and hoists her over her shoulders. They swim up and utilize flares to fend off any sharks that may come and attack them. They talk to Taylor and tell him that they are swimming up. He tells them to go for it but not to go too fast or the nitrogen bubbles will kill them. They continue but their flare turns off. They light another one and continue swimming for the top, the sharks just a few feet away from them. They reach the surface and Taylor throws out a ring buoy which the girls grab onto. As Taylor pulls them back to the boat, a shark bites Lisa's leg but after a bloody struggle between the savage beast, she manages to escape. They get to the boat where Benjamin Luis and Taylor begin pulling them up. But as they do, another shark bites Lisa on the leg again. She's submerged and begins to fight with the shark, picking its eyes with her fingers which allows her to break free. They are both helped back onto the boat and Lisa lies on her back, she begins to hallucinate. Then, in a surprising twist, it turns out that the last few sequences were just all in her head. Lisa is still in fact pinned by the cage and she's been hallucinating everything since she began breathing from the new oxygen tank. Still hallucinating that she's on Taylor's boat, she tells Kate that they're finally free and begins laughing hysterically. On the earpiece, Taylor tells her that it's all just an hallucination, but Lisa doesn't seem to be getting it. Several flashlights flash towards the cage and it's revealed that it's the Coast Guard coming to save her. Lisa is freed by them and they bring her back up. She comes back to her senses and calls out for Kate, who isn't responding. Tears roll down her face as she and the Coast Guard rise back to the surface safely. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.